In the past several days, I heard people talking about China, and also I talked to friends about China and Chinese internet. Something is very challenging to me. I want to make my friends to understand China is complicated. So I always want to tell the story like one hand it is that, the other hand is that. You can't just tell one side story. I give you an example. China is a brick country. Brick country means Brazil, Russia, India, and China. This emerging economy really is helping revival of the world economy. But at the same time, on the other hand, China is a sick country. The, the terminology coined by Facebook IPO paper five. He said the sick country means Syria, Iran, China, and North Korea. The four countries have no access to Facebook. So basically, China is a sick brick country. <laughs> Another project was built up to watch China and Chinese internet. But now today, I want to tell you my personal observation in the past several years from that war. So, if you are a fan of the Game of Thrones, you definitely know how important a big war. For an old kingdom, it prevents weird things from the north. <laughs> Same was true for China. In the north, there was a great war, Changcheng. It protected China from invaders for 2,000 years. But China also have a great firewall. That's the biggest digital boundary in the whole world. It's not only to defend. Chinese regime from the overseas, from the universal value, but also prevent Chinese own citizen to access the global free internet, and even separate themselves into blocks, not united. So, basically, internet has two internets. One is the internet; the other is the China net. But if you think the China net is something like a Dead land, waste land. I think it's wrong. But we also use very simple metaphor, the cat and the mouse game, to describe in the past 15 years the continuing fight between Chinese censorship, government censorship, the cat, and the Chinese internet users. That means us, the mouse. But sometimes this kind of a metaphor is too simple. So today I want to upgrade it to 2.0 version. In China, we have 500 million internet users. That's the biggest population of netizen internet users in the whole world. So even Chinese is a totally censored internet, but still Chinese internet society is really booming. How make it? It's simple. You have Google, we have Baidu. You have Twitter. We have Weibo. You have Facebook. We have Renren. You have YouTube. We have Youku and Twitter. Chinese government blocked every single international Web 2.0 services, and we Chinese copycat everyone. <laughs> so that's kind of the thing I call the small censorship. So that's not only to censor you. Sometimes that's Chinese national internet policy is very simple: block and clone. On the one hand, he wants to satisfy people's need of social network, which is very important because people really love social networking. But on the other hand, they want to keep the server in Beijing so they can access the data anytime they want. That's also the reason Google was. Pull out from China because they can't accept the fact Chinese government want to keep the server. Sometimes the Arab dictators didn't understand these two hands. For example, Mubarak, he shut down the internet. 
he wants to prevent the netizens to criticize him. But once netizens can't go online, they go on street. And now the result is very simple. We all know Mubarak is technically dead. But also, Ben Ali, Tunisia president, didn't follow the second rule. That means keep the server in your hand. He allowed Facebook, a US-based service, to continue to stay on inside Tunisia. So he can't prevent it. his own citizens to post critical video against his corruption. It's the same thing happened. He was the first to topple during the Arab Spring. But those two very smart you know, national censorship policy didn't prevent Chinese social media become a really public sphere, a battlefield of public opinion, and the nightmare of Chinese officials. Because we have 300 million microbloggers in China. It's the entire population of the United States. So when these 300 million people, microblogger, even they blog the tweet in a censored platform, but itself is China-led, but itself can create very powerful energy, which has never happened in the Chinese history. 2011, the July, two blazing trains crashed in Wenzhou, a southern city. Right after the train crash, authorities literally want to cover up the train, bury the train. So it angered Chinese netizens. The first five days after the train crash, there were 10 million criticism of the posting on the social media, which never happened in Chinese history. And uh, later, th later this year, the real minister was sacked and sentenced to jail for 10 years. And also, the very recently, very funny debate between the Beijing Environment Ministry and the American Embassy in Beijing. Because the ministry blamed the American Embassy for intervening Chinese internal politics by disclosing the air quality data of Beijing. So, the app is the embassy data, the PM 2.5. He showed 148, the show is dangerous for sensitive group. So, suggestion is not good to go outside. But the down is the ministry's data. It shows 50. He said it's good. It's good to go outside. But 99% of Chinese microbloggers stand firmly on the embassy side. I live in Beijing. Every day, I just watch the Amer American embassy's data to decide whether I should open my window. <laughs> Why Chinese social networking, even within the censorship, is so bombing? Part of the reason is Chinese languages. You know, Twitter and Twitter clones have a kind of a limitation 140 characters. But in English, it's 20 words or a sentence with a short link. Maybe in Germany, a German language, maybe just aha. <laughs> but in Chinese language, it's really about 140 characters, means a paragraph, a story. You can almost have all the journalistic elements to there. For example, this is the Hamlet of Shakespeare. It's the same content. One, you can see exactly one Chinese tweet is equal to 3.5 English tweets. <laughs> Chinese is always cheating, right? <laughs> so because of this, Chinese really regard this microblogging as a media, not only headline to media. And also, the clone. Signal Company is the guy who cloned the Twitter. And they even have their own name with, with Weibo. Weibo is Chinese translation for microblog. It has owned the innovation at the commenting area, make the Chinese Weibo more like Facebook rather than the original Twitter. So these innovations and the clones as the Weibo and the microblogging, when they come to China in 2009, they immediately become the media platform itself. It become a media platform of 300 million readers. It, it become the media.
If anything not mentioned in Weibo, it does not appear to exist for the Chinese public. But also, Chinese social media is really changing Chinese mindset and Chinese life. For example, they give the voiceless people a channel to make your voice heard. We had a petition system. It's a remedy outside the judicial system because Chinese central government want to keep a miss. The emperor is good, but all the local officials are thugs. So that's why the petitioner, the victims of the peasants, went to take the train to Beijing to petition to central government. Want the emperor want to settle the problem, but when more and more people go to Beijing, they also cause the risk of revolution. So they send them back recent years, and even some of, the, of them were put into black jail. But now we have the Weibo, so I call it Weibo petition. People just use the cell phone to tweet. So your sad stories. By some chance, your story will be picked up by reporters, professors, or celebrities. One of that is Yao Chen. She is most popular microblogger in China, who has about 21 million followers. They're almost like a national TV station. If you start sad story, will pick up by her. So this Weibo social media, even in the censorship, still gave Chinese a real chance for 300 million people every day chatting together, talking to, together. It's like a big TED, right? <laughs> but also, it is like the first time a public sphere happened in China. Chinese people start to learn how to negotiate and talk to people. But also, the cat, the censorship is not sleeping. It's so hard to post some sensitive words in the Chinese Weibo. For example, you can't post the name of the president, Hu Jintao, and also you can't post the city of Chongqing, the name. And until recently, you can't search the surname of top, top leaders. So the Chinese are very good at these palms and alternative wording and even memes. They even name serve, you know, use the name of this war changing battle between the grass mud horse and the river crab. Grass mud horse is Tao Nima. It's the phonogram for motherfucker. It's <laughs> netizen call themselves. <laughs> netizen call themselves. River crab is the He Xie. It's the phonogram for harmonization for censorship. So that's kind of a Tao Nima versus the He Xie. That's very good. But um, so that's in, when some very political exciting moment happened, you can see on the Weibo, you see a lot of very weird stories happened. Weird the phrases and the words. Even you have a PhD of Chinese language, you can't understand them. <laughs> but you, can you expand more? No. Because Chinese Xingnan Weibo, when it was funded, is exactly one month after the official blocking of Twitter.com. That means from the very beginning, the Weibo our already has already convinced the Chinese government we will not become the stage for any kind of a threat to the regime. For example, anything you want to post, like get together or meet up or work, it will automatically will record it and data mined and report it to a pool for further an political analysis. Even you want to have some gathering, before you go there, the place is already waiting for you. Why? Because they have the data. They have everything in their hand. So they, you can, they can use the 1984 scenario data mining of the dissident. So the crackdown is very serious. But I want you to notice a very funny thing during the process of the cat and mouse. The cat is the censorship, but Chinese is not only one cat, but also have a local cat, central cat and local cats. <laughs> you know, Server is in the local cat's hand. So it lets, when the netizen criticizes local government, local government has no any access of the data in Beijing. Without bribing the central cats, he can do nothing, only apologize. So this three year, in the past three years, social movement about microblogging really changed local government. They can more, become more and more transparent because they can't access the data. The server is in Beijing. 
the story about train crash, maybe the question is not about why 10 million criticism in five days, but why Chinese central government allow the five days of freedom of speech online. It never happened before. Answer is very simple. Because even the top leaders was fed up with this guy, this independent kingdom, so they want to excuse. So public opinion is a very good excuse to punish him. But also, the Bo Xi Lai case recently, very big news, he's a princeling. But in, from the February to the April in this year, Weibo really become a marketplace of rumors. You can almost joke everything about these princelings. Everything. It's almost you are living in the United States. But if you dare to retreat or mention any fake coup about Beijing, in Beijing, you will definitely will be arrested. So this kind of freedom is targeted and uh, precise window. So Chinese in China, censorship is normal. Something you find is freedom is weird. Something will happen behind. Because he was very popular leftist leader, so central government want to purge him. They need a very cute to convince the, uh, all the Chinese people why he's so bad. So the, the, the Weibo, the 300 million public sphere, become very good convenient tool for political fight. But this technology is very new, but the technique is very old. It's made famous by Chairman Mao, Mao Zedong, because he mobilized millions of Chinese people in the Cultural Revolution to destroy every local government. It's very simple because Chinese central government don't need even lead the public opinion. They just give them a target window. No censor people. No censoring in China become a political tool. So that's the update about this game, Cat and the Mouse. Social media changed Chinese mindset. More and more Chinese intend to embrace freedom of speech and the human rights as their birthright, not some imported American privilege. But also, it gave Chinese a national public sphere for people to, it's like a training of their citizenship, preparing for their future democracy. But it didn't change Chinese political system. And also, Chinese central government utilized this centralized server structure to strengthen his power to control the local government and the different factions. So, what's the future? But after all, we are the mouse. Whatever the future is, we should fight against the mouse. There is not only in China, but also in the United States, there are some very small, cute, but bad cats. <laughs> Sofa, Pipa, Ekta, TPP and ET, ITU. And also, like Facebook and uh, the Google, they claim they are friends of the mouse. But sometimes we see them dating with the cats. So my conclusion is very simple. We Chinese fight for our, for our freedom. You just watch your bad cats. Don't let them to hook with the Chinese cats. <laughs> Only in this. In the future, we will achieve, achieve the dreams of the mouse that we can treat anytime, anywhere, without fear. Thank you.